here i will be discussing a case of systemic lupus erythematosus to this case i'd like to show how sle is often a very missed diagnosis at primary care level even at specialty level so this particular lady to go back to her history she presented with pain abdomen intense pain abdomen to a surgeon about 3 uh, to 4 years back during which time she underwent surgical open appendectomy surgical appendectomy thinking that she, her pain abdomen was due to appendicitis so this is how her story started after that this was about 4 years back after that she kept on having pain, uh, episodes of pain abdomen she had oral ulcers and she had repeated admissions during which time she underwent endoscopies also so in the endoscopy she had oral ulcers in, in the endoscopy when i reviewed their endoscopy which was about uh, endoscopy re- reports which was done about 2 to 3 years back she had multiple esophageal ulcers so treatment for those esophageal ulcers were given with multiple antacids and uh, with multiple treatments she had been to many specialists as well so this was this story has been happening since about 3 to 4 years and she presented to another surgeon i believe that was about 2 years back when uh, with pain abdomen again so this was about 2 years back during which time the doctor wanted to get her ct abdomen done so for getting ct abdomen done to uh, for us to give contrast creatinine level was checked so when the creatinine level was checked her creatinine was 4.9 so that was the first time when creatinine was on the higher side so that is how she was referred to me to see why the creatinine was on the higher side how they could get a ct abdomen done she presented with pain abdomen on review of her reports she had anemia as well so what was thought uh, by the surgeon was probably she had gi bleed due to which she had anemia and pain abdomen and she had already undergone multiple uh, evaluations as well so this is how uh, it all started on re- uh, eva- on reviewing her uh, files what i got to know was she has undergone appendectomy she has undergone multiple procedures but her urine routine which was done long back even during the first admission had multiple uh, rbcs in the urine and she also had 4 plus protein urea she did not have a pedal edema her creatinine was normal absolutely normal during that time as well she ha- her blood picture showed mild pancytopenia her hp was on the lower side around 8 hemoglobin platelets were around 130 140 total count was around 3700 to 3800 this was the time when she underwent appendectomy she had anemia and she had proteinuria this was further evaluation was not done and it was missed so again every time when she underwent one or the other intervention she always had protein urea she had esophageal ulcer she was even treated with akt even biopsy of that was done and she was treated with akt that was about 3 years back so even then she had protein urea which was ignored so what i would like to discuss in this particular case was she uh, after uh, when she presented at that point of time we did a renal biopsy she had pancytopenia she had oral ulcer she had esophageal ulcers and uh, urine protein urea so this was she had multi system organ involvement so this was a time when diagnosis of sle was suspected when she presented to me the creatinine was 4.9 at that point of time we admitted her pulse there with steroids did a renal biopsy and it was class 4 uh, lupus nephritis she also had uh, skin lesions as well it was a difficult case for to manage since she had allergies to various drugs she had allergy to quinolones she has allergy to septran and she has she has allergy to uh, flucon as well as well so even uh, we had difficulty in managing her even cyclophosphamide which we used for uh, to diagnose uh, sorry to treat uh, systemic lupus erythematosus she couldn't withstand even mycophenolate mofetil she couldn't withstand she kept on having loose motions she is on mycophenolate sodium right now she is doing pretty all right now she doesn't have any symptoms i'll just show few of the uh, signs in her she has lesions facial lesions she has she has skin lesions she is being managed by uh, a dermatologist as well she has scars of heel lesions she had various bullous lesions which were part of her systemic lupus erythematosus if you can see here this finger is turning blue focus on this if we can see this 
these fingers are turning blue right now she has Reynolds phenomenon I was I have purposely put on the AC so that there will be uh, temperature will be low in this room so that I can demonstrate uh, Reynolds phenomenon in her her fingers are turning blue and uh, this is because of Reynolds phenomenon due to this uh, she has been having pain uh, uh, in, in her fingers and uh, so uh, this is uh, this is why she has presented to me again today during a routine follow up so the points to be learnt in this particular case are again sle requires high index of suspicion at the primary care she has been struggling since almost 4 years because her systemic lupus erythematosus was missed she had proteinuria simple test which was done even in the first admission itself proteinuria and hematuria which was there but she underwent appendicectomy because she had pain abdomen probably her pain abdomen could have been due to her esophageal ulcers or gastric ulcers or whatever not only that again she presented at multiple places she had gone to gastroenterologist gi surgeon where endoscopies were done esophageal ulcers were there she was treated with acute uh, att so simple test of urine routine should not be ignored she also had pancytopenia she had oral ulcers eventually she had multiple skin lesions so all these put together she had systemic lupus erythematosus right now she is doing fine we could demonstrate her uh, facial uh, lesions we could demonstrate her skin lesions and even Reynolds phenomenon in this particular case so sle how does it present it can present in a very subtle way just with proteinuria so always proteinuria should not be ignored sle is a multi-system involvement anemia when, uh, when when a patient has got constellation of symptoms constellation of signs we should always keep sle as one of our diagnosis malar rash discoid rash photosensitive fd oral ulcers polycirrhositis many a times what we see somebody presenting with uh, ascites and pleural effusion they tend to be treated as uh, taken as tubercular patients and they keep getting akt uh, for their treatment so they have got the so patients of uh, may have polycirrhositis photosensitivity they may have Reynolds phenomenon hematological uh, presentation like they might be having anemia uh, pancytopenia but they may have and they can have renal lupus nephritis even lupus nephritis alone they, they can only present with lupus and uh, they can have uh, psychological manifestations, psychiatric manifestations they can have cardiovascular manifestations uh, so in this uh, way patients with sle can present to you in many in many ways so a constellation of signs and symptoms multi-system involvement always you'll have to have you have to keep systemic lupus erythematosus at the back of your mind and also we should consider always in that in, in uh, as one of your differentials when you see a patient with multi-system involvement so these are the learning points from this particular case sle can be managed they can live a near normal life with sle and it can be managed well if if, if diagnosed early so for that you will have to have high index of suspicion thank you